This is going to be Revelation chapter 8. And Revelation chapter 8 will show us another look at the time of Jacob's trouble. The book of Revelation isn't in chronological order. You are basically seeing the tribulation in the order that John saw it. In this study, I want to focus on how these events will immediately affect the entire world. Revelation 8 1 says, When he had opened the seventh seal, there were silence, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. If you have ever seen any of the wicked horror movies made by Hollywood, then you know the scary part comes when the music stops. Before this point, we heard music in heaven in worship, and for some reason now there is silence. Revelation 8, 2, And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given the seven trumpets. This goes right along with the sets of seven in the book of Revelation. In chapter 1, you had seven golden candlesticks. You had seven churches. There are seven seals. God's number is seven. Uh, Revelation 8, 3 says, the, And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And a censer is a container where you would burn the incense. And if you look at Psalms 141 and verse 2, it says, Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. God loves the prayers of his saints. The Bible says they're like incense. And God even keeps the prayers that we pray in bottles. If you remember in chapter 6 of Revelation, in verse 10 it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? That was a prayer from the saints that out of the time of Jacob's trouble. So the angel with the golden censer is given much incense, and he offers it with the prayers of all saints. That prayer back in Revelation 6.10, those imprecatory prayers that the saints prayed there. Revelation 8.4 says, And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. God hears our prayers, and they're going right up there to him. Revelation 8, 5, And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. So the angel cast the censer into the earth, and now we're going to see what happens. In Revelation 8, 6, and 7, it says, And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound the first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. The immediate effect this will have on people on earth will be incredible. The hell will be busting up cars and houses. Imagine how busy the insurance companies will be. The fire will be burning people. The hospitals are going to be busy. This is going to be all over the news and social media. I saw a picture of a drawing and it showed what the end of the world would look like. It had a meteor headed towards the earth and everyone had their phones up taking a picture. And I can see people, people taking pictures of this fire and hell that comes down from heaven. But this fire and hell mingled with blood will also destroy a third part of the trees and all the green grass. And people spend so much time trying to make their yard look good. Yet it is going to be destroyed eventually. And this shows that God does not care about trees like everyone thinks he does. Revelation 8 and verse 8 says, And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the city, third part of the sea became blood. This great mountain here in verse 8, burning with fire, could possibly be a city. If you look at Jeremiah 51, verses 24 and 25, it says, And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. 
Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyest all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain. So here in Jeremiah fifty one twenty five, he makes a city a burnt mountain. So this great mountain in Revelation 8 could possibly be a city by comparing it with these verses in Jeremiah. Then Revelation 8, 9, And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Imagine all the animals that will wash up onto the land. There are probably species that we haven't even discovered yet which, which will wash up on land. And if there is a Loch Ness monster and other creatures like this, they may wash up as well. And I can see this being all over the news with all of this other stuff. And if that Jason A. character who makes all of the End Times news compilation videos was going to be here during the tribulation, then he would have a massive amount of clips and videos to compile together. But verse 9 also says a third part of the ships are destroyed. Some cruises will turn into nightmares. The Titanic will seem like a minor accident compared to what happens to the ships during this time. Revelation eight ten and 11. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Okay, so you have a great star that falls from heaven. And this could be a literal star. And if it is, then stars are a lot smaller than people think. Because it would just knock the earth out if it hit it. Or it could be an angel. Angels are mentioned as stars several times. In Job, they are referred to as morning stars. In Revelation 1, they are referred to as stars. Satan's tail will draw the third part of the stars, which is referring to the angels. So this star could be an angel. And if it is, we have another angel with the name, which is a rare thing. It doesn't usually say the angels' names. The star or angel is named Wormwood, and it affects the waters, making them bitter. This will have immediate effect on people. Remember how much the price of water went up for people when a hurricane hit where they lived? Stores are going to price their bottled water at an outrageous price. Another interesting thing is many of God's people will be able to drink these waters without dying. In Mark sixteen eighteen, it shows us one of the gifts of an apostle as being able to drink any deadly thing and it not hurt them. I believe these gifts come back in the tribulation for several several reasons. One reason is because the Jews re require a sign and God goes back to dealing with the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation 8.12 says, And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So these are literally dark times. You have much of the natural light being smitten. And these will be scary times because there is no telling what will be roaming the streets in the dark. If they are still having ball games and professional sports somehow continues despite all of the mess, all the games will be night games. With it being dark, I imagine crime will go up. Bad things happen at night. I can see more kidnapping, more sex trafficking. All that stuff's going to increase during this time. For one thing, it's dark. You can do it easier. You got all this mess going on around everywhere. It's going to be easier to go do bad things and riot and do stuff you're not supposed to do. People breaking into gas stations and those big groups and stealing everything. People is going to be getting raped and kidnapped. It's going to be like that wicked movie, The Purge, where people just go out and do what they want to do and get by with it because people aren't going to have time to stop you. And um, 
All the sex trafficking is going to be at an all-time high. You're going to have wicked people in the time of Jacob's trouble that their love has waxed cold because of their iniquity. They've sinned so much. There's not much light because of the sun smitten. There's not much light because people have forsaken God and the Bible. It's going to be a very scary time that you don't want to be here. And then Revelation 8.13 says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So it's not over. This is just a part of it. There's more bad things coming for the people on the earth. And if you're not saved, then you need to get saved because you don't want to be here during this horrible time that's going to take place on the earth, possibly in your lifetime, most likely in your lifetime, if you don't get saved and you're left behind at the rapture. If you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, it says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the Gospel is that Jesus Christ died. He died by shedding His blood. He died for your sins. He was buried, and, that, and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He is the Savior, and you need a Savior. He died for your sins because you are a sinner and you need a Savior because you're a sinner. If you stay in your sin, meaning you don't come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are and put your trust in Him to get your sins taken away, if you die in your sin, then you will go to hell. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. You're going to have a physical death. And then you're one day going to have a second death where you're cast into the lake of fire. But if you come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner you are and put your trust in his finished work on the cross. He did all the work for you. You're not saved by works. You're not saved by living a good life. You're not saved by being a good person. You're saved by coming to Jesus Christ, putting your trust in him and him alone. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're not saved, come to Jesus Christ right now the best way you know how. Put your trust in Him. Let Him know you're believing the gospel. Let Him know you know you're a, a sinner that deserves hell. And if you come to Him, putting your trust in Him, then He's going to save you. And you can be saved you won't have to worry about going to hell anymore. You won't have to worry about going through the time of Jacob's trouble anymore and seeing all these bad things that are going to happen on the earth. So I hope you get saved today before it's too late. This is going to be Revelation chapter 9. And we're going to see how the Hollywood horror movies and just movies in general have once again stolen plots from the book of Revelation. As you read Revelation, you can see how many writers, books, movies have copied the things written in the book. As we look at chapter 9, let's point out some of these stolen concepts. Starting out in verse 1, we see that we have, number 1, visitors from outer space. Revelation 9.1 says, And the fifth angel sounded, and a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now this visitor from outer, outer space, this star is definitely an angel. And they are referred to many times as stars in the scriptures, and the fact that this star gets a key makes it obvious. But this is a visitor from outer space. He came down from one of the heavens, and God is letting him have the keys. I'd like to point out that the fifth angel sounded, and throughout the Bible, the number five isn't just the number of grace, it is also the number of death. 
The visitor from outer space unlocks the door to something horrifying. Revelation 9-2 says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the, of the pit. The horror movies like The Fog, The Mist, Darkness Falls, and so on, copy this idea straight from the Bible. You can imagine earth at this time. Imagine all the cars that will be driving that will have to pull off the side of the road. Imagine the people looking out and seeing the smoke and the sun being darkened. I remember when the eclipse happened, the animals started making noises, and that will probably happen here. People are going to be coughing from the smoke and trying to get in shelter, and the opening of the bottomless pit alone will be horrifying. Notice the verse called it the smoke of a great furnace. And the Lord Jesus Christ calls the lake of fire a furnace of fire. In Matthew thirteen forty two, Revelation fourteen eleven, when referring to the eternal torment of those who take the mark, says the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Hell is a furnace of fire and has smoke that goes up forever and ever. But now let's see what comes out of the bottomless pit. Which brings us to our next scene in what looks like a horror movie from God. You have real monsters. In Revelation 9 3, it says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. These are literal monsters, real creatures that come up out of the bottomless pit. And there was a popular TV show marketed to kids called Real Monsters. All the monster stuff is just preparing people for what they will see in this coming future time period. And that is why they shove stuff like Monsters University or Monsters Inc. in your face, in the face of your kid. And notice these locusts are given power just like the horsemen are given power in Revelation chapter 6. God is the only person who doesn't have to give power. He has been, he's always been all power, all powerful. He doesn't have to be given power. He gives the power. And these locusts have power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Jesus Christ gave the apostles power to tread on scorpions. As of right now, those apostolic sign gifts have ceased. But I believe they are coming back in the time of Jacob's trouble. Luke ten nineteen says, Behold... I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So for God's people, <clears throat> for God's people who have the gifts of an apostle, they will be able to tread on scorpions, on these scorpion-like creatures if they need to. But look at more of the descriptions of these creatures. Revelation 9, 7 and 8. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. A good reason for a man not to have long hair is because it will make him look like these guys. They have faces like men, but they have hair like women. So there's another good reason for a man not to have long hair. And if their teeth are as lions, they would rip you in half, no problem. Revelation 9, 9 and 10, it says, And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. Not only do these hybrid mutants look scary but they also sound scary and they hurt men for five months these men will desire death because five is the number of death a revelation 9 4 says and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads See how God is taking care of the 144,000 from chapter 7 who have the seal of God in their forehead. This brings us to our next scene and what looks like a horror from God, which is torment.
Revelation 9, 5 says, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Men love movies about torture, which is shows man is a very wicked, sinful person. Uh, there's something wrong with someone that likes to watch other people suffer on screen. But something in man loves to watch others suffer. Even when I was lost, I couldn't bear to hear or watch a movie that had torture. It takes a sick mind to enjoy it. And this scene is God Almighty letting out his wrath on sin. And you see, these people are most likely atheists. They are under strong delusion. They would think death would relieve them of pain. Yet if they died, they would be in even more pain in hell fire. That's why I believe that they're atheists. Why would they desire to die knowing that God's real and that they're going to go to hell? Revelation 9, 6 says, And in those, days men shall, in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And now you have a bunch of people who should be dead. You have a bunch of people who have more than 13 reasons why they want to commit suicide. They are probably weeping wailing, gnashing of teeth, crying, and cutting themselves with stones. And they are basically dead, but yet won't die. So you have something like a zombie. And so that is the next scene in God's horror, horror script, a zombie apocalypse. People love these wicked horror movies. So God lets them live out this horror movie in real life. Better than virtual reality. It's really happening. And now these locusts, they have a king over them. This king brings us to our next scene in this reality horror movie, which is about a resurrected villain. All the horror movies have the villain coming back to life, like Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and all those other wicked horror movies that we should not watch as Christians. We've all watched movies we're not supposed to watch, most likely. I was a big movie watcher before I got saved. And now thinking back, see all that stuff stuck in my head. That stuff didn't go away. It's still there. And now looking back, I see how all that stuff copied the Bible. Revelation 9-11 says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Ab Ab Abaddon... And Apollyon means destroyer. Interestingly, one of the names in the Koran for Allah is al mumit which means the destroyer. The devil is a destroyer. And I believe the angel of the bottomless pit is Judas Iscariot. He is the son of perdition, as Jesus calls him in John 17, 12. Perdition means destruction. The Antichrist is also called the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. So you have the similarity there. Notice that Judas, when Judas died, he didn't go to hell, but went to his own place, as it says in Acts 1.24 through 25. And in John 6.70 through 71, in the chapter where you have 666, a chapter 6 and verse 66, it talks about in verses 70 through 71. That Judas Iscariot is a devil, and this is before the devil even entered to, into his body. So Judas, a devil, went to his own place, the bottomless pit. Satan will incarnate himself as a man. Judas Iscariot, who will be the resurrected villain. villain. And the Antichrist, the man of sin, will get a deadly wound in the middle of the tribulation. Revelation 13.3 says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is prophesied back in Zechariah chapter 11 about the Antichrist getting a head wound and rising from the dead. Something interesting is that before the prophecies about the Antichrist in Zechariah chapter 11 is that Judas is also prophesied in the verses before beforehand. Remember now that Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 
If you look at Zechariah eleven twelve through 17, it says, And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed me, so, or so they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces." Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. The idle shepherd is the Antichrist. Middle of the tribulation, he gets a wound by a sword and he's going to have a bad right eye. And see, in those verses, in 12 through 17, talks about the 30 pieces of silver, talks about the Antichrist getting a head wound. You have the connection again between the two son of perdition, Judas Iscariot, and the Antichrist. But the Antichrist will have a head wound that will affect his right eye. Revelation 13 says his deadly wound is healed. He res He's resurrected, deceives people into worshiping him. And at this time, he will sit in the temple of God demanding worship. When he resurrects, Satan places the soul of Judas Iscariot into the beast's body. And if you're not convinced of this, then check out Revelation 17.8, which says, The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. You see, Judas was, he was here in a physical body. He is not because right now his physical body is dead and he shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. The Antichrist is referred to as the son of perdition. And when he comes back, he will deceive people with miracles. Just like Judas had the gifts of an apostle when he was alive, even though he wasn't a righteous man. Second Thessalonians 2 9 says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So there is your resurrected villain, who is imitated by Jason Voorhees and every other serial killer in all these horror movies. Revelation nine twelve through 13 says, One woe is past, and behold, there come two more woes, two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So there is a golden altar in heaven with four horns, just like in Exodus 30. But now is about to be revealed the next scene in God's real life horror show, which is a swarm of monsters that are unleashed. And you can see this in movies like Goosebumps. If you have seen the trailer for this, it has a bunch of devilish creatures unleashed out of a book. In Revelation 9, 14 through 16, it says, Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. So this is a two hundred million soldiers released to kill off the population. Revelation nine seventeen through 18. And I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. These are supernatural, fire-breathing horses, and many believe that there will be an EMP, 
that causes everything to go back to the horse and buggy days during this time. But who knows? And then Revelation 9.19, For their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. So they are hurting people with their tails that are like serpents. And one of the gifts of the apostles was to be able to take up serpents. God's people who will have these sign gifts again, once again in that time period. We don't have them now, but they'll have them again then. They will not be hurt by the serpents. The sign gifts come back during the time of Jacob's trouble because God continues dealing with the Jew during that future time. The next thing we see about God's real life horror show is that once again people don't learn from their mistakes. The only thing men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Revelation 9:20 20 through 21 And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders nor of their sorceries nor of their fornication nor of their thefts. Just like in these horror movies the victims never learn from stupid mistakes and walk right into the line of the killer. They will go up the stairs instead of out the front door. They will go to the scary noises instead of away from the scary noises. As is here, people continue their idol worship and their rebellion, even though they have lost family and friends and have been dragged through hell on earth. But if you don't want to go through this horrible time, then you need to get saved before that time comes. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 1 Corinthians fifteen three through 4 gives you the gospel. It says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for you. He died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. And if you want to be saved, put your trust in that, what Jesus did on the cross, for salvation. And if you do that, you can be saved and have eternal life. Come to Jesus Christ today as the guilty sinner you are before it's too late.